Here we are back at uh, Center Valley Talk, and we've got two fantastic guests this morning. And we're going to start out with uh, a guest that you have seen before because he's a fantastic man who is a great writer, and he's interested in many subjects, subjects that mean help for people and everything to get better. So I, to uh, introduce again to Dr. Alan Hedberg. Alan. Hello there. Thank you. Nice to be back again. Good to see you. And uh, we got a good things to talk about today. Yes, we certainly do. You told me that you're going to talk about a subject that all of us are interested in. And if we aren't, we should be. And the, the people who uh, are set up to protect us, the police. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know, the uh, police have been a subject of a lot of controversy. Oh. And uh, we have everything on one hand to denigrate the police and defund them and uh, minimize them and not even support them. Uh, that's kind of one whole uh, scenario. And, and a whole number of cities and states kind of line up on that side of the of the equation, so to speak. Right. And then we have the other hand. We have those that really are supportive of the police and its traditional uh, manner of what police are like and what they are and the support that they need and the help they need and how good they can be with the support of the community uh, as compared to without it. So, And that's on the other hand. So we have this kind of dual nature of what we're going to do with police these days. And every city, every state, every county, you know, every municipality has to kind of come to some terms with what they're going to do with the police. But yet, the police stand in what I refer to as my new book, The Heroes in Blue. They uh -oh. still remain yes. the heroes in blue. And uh, whether we like them or not, and whether they do what we want them to do or not, they are the heroes of our society, the heroes of our community. And we need to honor that. We need to honor that. We need to recognize that. We need to uh, line up you know, with our police force. And... Uh, give them the assistance, give them the backup that they need because they serve us. And when we serve them, they serve us. We have a mutual relationship that's favorable and it's honorable and is helpful to both. But when we turn our back on the police and we let them be on their own, then we don't get the support that we need and we're paying for and, and expect. And they aren't happy either because they can't do the job. They have really sworn oath to do. And that's very true because you see a lot of movies where uh, the, the policemen are trying to do a job and people are getting in their way and pushing them the opposite way. Yeah. And it's, it's just not fair. Well, this is what goes on in the street. I mean, this is, a, this is the street battle that's going on and police are in some cities, now not everywhere, this is only in some cities mm -hmm. and some municipality areas, but uh, where they are seen as an unwelcome guest and uh, unwanted guest, and therefore people oppose them and push them around, and, and that's, that's not wise at all. I mean, obviously we know the consequences of that. If you had a city and without a police force, you're going to have a crime rate that you can't count as high. No, there wouldn't be. I mean, the city of Chicago is now looking at reducing their police force in half. No kidding. I mean, they're already the number one city in murders, and the crime rate is astronomically high in Chicago, and now they want to reduce it by half. So you can see that there is a battle going on. It's not a kind of a criminal battle going; it's a political battle, mm -hmm. you know, that's going on in our world today. That with the police being opposed by people that they, all along the way in the history has been their supporters, has been their on their same team, and now they're turning against them. So. Police officers today are in a tough spot. Oh. Kids are in a tough spot today if they are thinking about going into police work as a career. Right. Oh, my gosh. That, that's a, a tough career to go into. It is a tough career to and go into. And you've got to be very brave to put yourself in a career that, of that Well, type. my advice to kids is this. When, when I, and I talk to many, many kids going into police work or considering it mm -hmm. you know, as a career. I say, it's a great field. Do it. It's a wonderful field. It's a wonderful service. You'll feel good about it. You'll like it. You'll have a, a respectable career and lifestyle. But, now here it comes the but, go to work in a small town in the rural area. Wow. Stay out of the major cities. Stay out of the major me metropolitan areas. That's tough stuff. 
and no kid needs to be into a major city with war going on against the police officers. Go to a small town, get to know the community, become a friend of the community, relate to the community, serve the community. You'll live a good life, you have a good career, and it'll be a happy experience. So that's what I tell Craig kids today. It's, it's wonderful advice to them because I'm sure a lot of young men think that that's a very wonderful thing to be in and they don't really understand a lot of the things that make it hard. Well, that's, that's the problem. And, uh, you know, kids want a, a good career and many of them want to be into police work because they believe in it. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't believe in a police operation and a police career when you work in a city that does not appreciate the police. I mean, you can't do it. So go to a small town where you'll be appreciated and you'll be honored and you'll be respected and you'll become part of the community and you'll enjoy community life, you'll raise your family, and it will be a good experience and a good career opportunity for you. That's, that's my advice to kids today. That is wonderful advice. And I'm wondering, um, where do they get their training to be police? Well, you can go to a, the law enforcement uh, training program, usually in a city college, mm -hmm. community college, mm -hmm. uh, and you get in criminology or law enforcement, and then you go to the police academy, you know, which is almost a year in length, and, and get specific training wow. in that. So it's, it's a very positive training program. It's very concentrated, and, and it's doable. Mm -hmm. if, so I always recommend kids get get your two years of junior college, and make sure you major in criminology, you know, or in a related field like that, sociology, psychology, criminology, and then go to the police academy and get hired and go on and enjoy life. Now, <laughs> serve they, our community, serve all of us. Right. Uh, do they give them any advice on how how uh, to understand all of the? Uh, danger that you will be into and how to handle that danger. Well, in this book, I do I have a chapter you know, committed to that. You know, the dangers of a police officer today and uh, how they have to protect themselves mm -hmm. while serving the community. And that's kind of a dual responsibility you have. Obviously, you have to protect yourself. You have a family, you have you know, people depending on you. You have to be sure that you protect yourself. But to serve the community, too, you have to have a mission. You have to have a, a, a really commitment to that. You have a passion you know, to serve a community and to serve it through the police system. And um, then it works. Then it works. The community works for you. It works for, for everyone. And do you, do you find that a lot of young men are doing it? And what about women? Well, we're seeing an increase in number of women uh, now coming into the, uh, the police academies and into police work. Uh, in the last, oh, maybe five years, certainly, but maybe almost ten We've seen an increased level now of women, and they tend to do a good job, by the way. Uh, at first, it was very tough because the police officers, male, did not accept them and didn't think they could serve and you know, so on. So uh, it does create some problems, uh, you know, but, it, it, but women serve quite well, and they're, they're, they're now much more welcomed you know, into the police force and into communities. And I think the, the women provides a perspective, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, in area of crime or in areas of conflict and areas of difficulty that takes place in communities. And they can serve well, and they do serve well. So it's a, to be encouraged. Because they, they can really do good with a, a woman that uh, is in trouble. Because exactly. a, wom a woman to woman is much easier than trying to have a man get stuff, something out of a woman. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so. that, that's right. I mean, women have a softer approach, if you will. They have a softer personality. They have a uh, reputation of being a little softer, being more nurturing. So people are not as agitated by being confronted by a police officer that's female as compared to a big, burly male police officer. So when you think in terms of confronting people who are upset and agitated and mad and angry and all the rest, mm -hmm. uh, having a softer approach that women pr produce and can provide makes sense. Especially uh, uh, to women that are in trouble or with children, they're so scared. And, and children as well, teenagers you know, yeah. as well. 
Yeah, so that they're really scared and they need yeah. somebody who's going to say. But you have to kind of, this is one of the problems that police officers have. If you have a child, let's take a teenager, for instance, uh -huh. that's raised in a home with a very aggressive, mean father. Uh -huh. And then if he's confronted at some point by a male police officer, he's going to be aggressive. He's going to respond violently. He's going to respond aggressively. Right. He may be much more approachable by a female officer if he hasn't had a negative experience with a mother. Right. But on the other hand, if you've had a negative experience with the mother, she's been the one that's been abusive, then you're approached by a female officer, you're going to react to that. Yeah. So what takes place in the arrest uh, arena and the interchange, you don't just relate to each other as a potential criminal and a police officer. You do it on the basis of what kind of experience you've had as a child in your home. Right. And if you're if you're if you've been abused and you've been roughed up by a man, you aren't going to be very happy about a male police officer coming your way. Uh -huh. You're going to react to that. And that's why we have some of the violence towards police officers today. They take it out on them. They're the manifestation of a father that's been abusive. Yes, definitely. That makes sense. Yeah. But I love the fact that you're doing there you have a book on that, that the people can take that and read. I read. think anybody who's thinking about police work. This is a good book to get, uh, Heroes in Blue. Uh, it's a manual. Yes. You know, I talk about family life, you know, because when a police officer goes out on the street, he's got to have a good family in back of him. He's got to know that he's got a wife and he's got a child and children that support him and are dependent upon him and love him and care for him and care what happens to him or her. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's the same idea. You, you want a, a support system in the police force where you work with your colleagues and you want a good support system at home. When you come home, you want to have calm. You want to have absence of conflict. <laughs> You've had that all day long. That's right. Yeah. So really, uh, family life is a very important part of a police officer's effectiveness mm -hmm. to know that he has that kind of a backup and he has the absence of conflict at home. Right. You know, it's like anything. You have conflict at home, you go to work, you have conflict. It's it's a world of conflict, and you wear down in that, and you wear out, and you tend to overreact then at times. I want to ask you something that's sort of funny or weird. <clears throat> what do you think all of these television programs about the cops, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or? Well, it, it's, it's not a good thing overall if you're watching it. If you watch it periodically once in a while, maybe it's not such a bad thing. Get a kind of a, uh, a perspective on how police work and kind of the way they are. But if you're watching this pretty regularly, you know, you're buying into the violence and you're buying into the crime issue oh. and you're getting too, too involved in the, in the whole issue of criminality uh, and as it relates to you. So um, people who watch the cop TV programs of various kinds um, get stimulated by that. And, 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 and then if they have cause to be angry, have cause to be violent, have cause to be reactive, They'll react. <laughs> Definitely. So just because you watch television doesn't mean you're going to be violent or you're going to react. <laughs> you have to have cause to it. Mm -hmm. But that will give you the thing to do. It will teach you how to do it so that when you have cause, that's how you react. It's what you saw on television. Right. Well, uh, Doctor, this is so important. And if, I'm so happy that you have a book on that because there, we're all affected by television and movies and stuff like that. Well, we are. And we have to have something that brings us back down to reality. And uh, your book's going to be a big help on that. Well, communities need a police force. Right. We cannot let communities defund and fire and do away with a, a police force. That, you, you can't do that. Gosh, that's and, true. And um, if you're doing that, it's, it's just irresponsible. So I'm, I'm, I'm just saying get this book if you're in, the, in a, a city that has a lot of troubles and you, you, there are a lot of police that might be somebody you could help. Who yeah. knows? Uh, yeah. So I thank you so much for coming. Well, let, let me read a thank you note here, okay, oh, before we, we end here today. Okay. And I, want, I have it on the screen. And, and this is a thank you note to law enforcement officers. Yes. And uh, in the book, I end with this as a kind of a thank you note. Wonderful. And uh, you sign it, and you give it to a police officer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it says this, thank you for all you do to, pr to protect my family and keep America safe. 
I realize that America's laws enforce officer, enforcement officers get a lot of undeserved criticism from the news media and others. So I want you to know that I and many others are part of the silent majority of Americans who deeply respect and appreciate those in your profession. I would, it, it would be impossible to have a safe and civilized society or community without our brave law enforcement officers such as yourself. As I am proud of you, please be proud of yourself and your colleagues. Your service is vital to a safe and prosperous future for me, for my family, and for my community. And, uh, so that's a personal thank you note, you know, that you sign and it represents your gratitude and your appreciation for what police officers do and serve you and how it helps you as an individual in your family. Photocopy it, sign it, and give it to a police officer. Absolutely. I think that is fantastic. And also, next time you come in, we're going to talk about parenting. Yeah, I have a course on parenting. It's through Fresno Pacific uh, University, and um, it's for parents who just need a course on being a better parent. That's right. You do it online. Do it your own, no, there's never been any. Do it at your own leisure. and Nobody's that. ever been to t teach you how to be a mother or a father. Well, there's, uh, there's ways to learn that. Okay. But there's learning. So even if you're a good one, you can be a better one. Okay, we're going to have that <laughs> next time you come in, Doctor. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Nice to uh, talk, yeah. Your books and everything. So the, the, yeah. our audience. Heroes in Blue. Amazon. And on my website, okay. www.booksbyhedberg.com. Thank you so much, Doctor. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye for today.